Hello and welcome. I am Seth Manfield, and I'm going to be playing some Jeskai Super Friends today. So, this is a pretty stock version of the deck. It's it's actually the version that Xan won the last SCG Open with, but I've also seen John Rolfe playing similar lists. We've seen a bunch of players doing well with Jeskai Super Friends. So... The deck is actually just quickly becoming one of the top decks in the format. It did well in the, the mocks. So, yeah. The mana base is a bunch of your three-color dual lands in the Jeskai colors, but then you've also got a couple sweet Planeswalker-based lands. You've got your four copies of Interplanar Beacon, so this card is going to be excellent, especially if your opponent is trying to beat you down, just gaining a little bit of life. And it can also fix your, your colors. And then as well, we've got two copies of the Mobilized District. A lot of times when playing a game with this deck, players can forget about the District, but... The cost reduction to activate it is very relevant. It can become a threat in and of itself. Then as far as the creature... So this isn't like an all-in Planeswalker deck, right? Like we've got four copies of Narset and four copies of Teferi. These are like the, the th new three-color walkers that are getting the most praise, I would say. Um... Just super good in a, in a wide variety of matchups, especially when playing longer games. And four copies of Sarkin the Masterless. So those are your, like, four of Planeswalkers. Sarkin being able to animate all of your other Planeswalkers, really, really relevant. And there's, I think it is 18 total walkers, so it's not like you're your 22 walker you know there's there's there are some builds of this a variation of this deck um that are actually just almost all planeswalkers but we do have some interactive spells i like the inclusion of card sign of Urza. still one of my favorite cards in the for format now interestingly there's only one copy of teferi of hero of dominaria and that's not because teferi of hero, hero of dominaria is not a good card we know that Teferi, the big Teferi is good, but in this particular deck, Sarkhan is kind of the way you win your games, so the five drop slot becomes a little bit cluttered if you add too many Teferi, so there's there's only one. Sahili is the other three mana walker. And then we've got our interactive spells. So, I, so we're able to actually kill some creatures if our opponent starts off with an aggressive start. So four shock and then some some bur some additional burn, including Clarion, which can be a mass removal spell. Spell Pierce is a, a nice form of interaction. Opt and then the two copies of Mox Amber, rounding out the main deck. After sideboard, Legion Warboss can come in and just be a, a really nice surprise out of the sideboard as a, th a creature based threat that. The opponent also, sometimes when you're trying to kill only Planeswalkers, um, it's easy to forget about having removal for creatures. Lyra's perfect against like the mono-red aggro decks. We've got Prison Realm. A lot of times this will come in against other Planeswalker-based decks. Dovin's Veto is essentially... You know, just a better negate at this point. So it's going to be the counterspell of choice and a couple of lava coils. So this is it. I am going to be playing this on the the ladder.
All right, yeah, we're definitely definitely not mulliganing this one. It does it does look like we're up against possibly the most popular aggressive deck in the format, mono red aggro. We could play the Mox Amber, but it's not really going to do anything by playing it now. So, Runaway Steamkin is a card that really demands an, an early answer. I'm going to opt, hoping to find like a, a Shock or a Removal spell. We can play Sulfur Falls out now. Which allows us to opt at the end of our opponent's turn. Now, we really want a, a definite Clarion now. Like if if we draw Clarion here off and off the opt, we're in a pretty great spot. But anything else, like the planeswalkers, we need time to actually, you know, get them going. And so this is kind of an issue. We just don't... We haven't drawn any of our early red removal. I think we've got about eight spot removal spells in the deck. So now we're finding some of it, but it's, it's really might, be, might end up just being too late. Now, what I can do is I can play the shock, but we can't produce... Um... We can't produce the red mana just yet, so... Yeah, there's there's really no point in doing it. If I play the Mox... If I play the Mox Amber, it would just produce blue. So our opponent's just kind of got a super aggressive start. We might actually just be dead. Um, that's 9 damage right there. So if our opponent has another burn spell, it is going to be game over. Even a Viashino Pyromancer would, would do it. Okay. So, on the draw there, with not the, the, not the right cards. We didn't have the right cards for, for that matchup in that game so we're going to be boarding in our lyras and then we can board in additional removal spells i'm going to take out the ambers because so sometimes it's harder to stick a planeswalker against an aggro deck lava coils and prison realm is nice against specifically chandra we're going to cut some little to fairies. Sahili is like some we can we're going to cut some of our planeswalkers. We just we kind of have to. Like here is where we come more of a become more of a traditional control deck. Like Sahili doesn't really protect itself the turn it comes in. So, I'm going to prioritize Narset over the Sahili. Play three Nars. Like, Teferi, Teferi is also not great. Um, like, sometimes being able to bounce a... Like, a, a Steamkin to buy yourself time is nice. But it's, it's not... Like, we're just... We're just boarding in a bunch of removal. Our five mana walkers are very good. Narset can find us either removal or planeswalkers. So I, I think this is w what I'm going to go with. On the play. Yeah, so this is a very, very different hand, which is to be expected. We boarded in more interactive removal. We're less likely to just get run over. If we lose, it's more likely to be to a card like, say, an Experimental Frenzy or some sort of, you know, grindy element. But post-board, feeling pretty good about this. 
So we can shock now to turn off any potential wizard's lightnings. So I'm just gonna do that. We have we have more removal in case our opponent plays more creatures. So I'm interested in using the shock to take care of this pyromancer. Not sure which land we should play though, because we might want to also lightning strike. Should maybe have done this before. Well, we're letting our opponent untap. If they use a wizard's lightning here, like then, then they may not have removal spells for our Lyra. So we have a couple options. We can take a draw step. Just see what we draw. Like if we draw Clarion, it's great. Because we can just sweep both of these. We don't have an immediate play in hand, but I'm just gonna use the lightning strike. And now now we just need a fifth land, right? Like if we hit land five for Lyra. We should be in a pretty good spot, but we, we need it, you know, right on time. All right, land. No land. So like even, even a mox would not help us here. Um, we don't have, we just don't have the legendary threats. I guess I could have I could have spell pierced the strike. Maybe that would have been okay. All right, we need it right here. Oh, that's so sad. Not like this. All right. Well, not how I wanted the first match to go with the deck, but I I feel like we got a bit unlucky. Now it is true that you board in more five mana cards when you board in the Lyras, but we really just needed one more land that game. Playing against Luke, a player I'm, I'm pretty familiar with. He, he was playing in the Mythic Invitational. So, don't know don't know what he he will be playing might be the blue green ramp deck that's been kind of making the rounds recently so we could we could to fairy time raveler and bounce the druid or we can play narset i think it's one of those two options I'm just gonna play the Time Raveler and go for the bounce. Right on schedule. No, I am not making this up as I go. Shock is nice, that gives us an answer to the incubation druid. And it is just gonna get replayed. So do we want another Time Reveler, or do we want Car- like... All of this stuff seems pretty good. I'm gonna take the Karn, because it's possible next turn we want to just play Karn. And just kill this right now. So this deck does have access to- normally the blue-green deck has mass manipulations. Mass manipulation in it 
It's got Nissa in it. So we have to be worried about this card. So we may want to try to keep up Spell Pierce, depending on how things play out. Now, if we draw a land, we can Sarkin. And slamming Sarkin is, like, pretty, pretty, real, pretty great here. To the library. Gross Spiral. And our, our opponent neat. It's both surprising to me that our opponent named Gross Spiral and they, they connected on it. They, they did hit it. Well, I'm just going to slam the Sarkin. Sarkin the Masterless. Like by by playing it we can we can just make a two turn clock even. So so one option is to just ignore, ignore Tamio. They are coming. I think I'm gonna do that because I don't think this is a Nexus of Fate deck. I think it is more likely to be a deck with cards like Mass manipulation. Now our our opponent could have Nissa here. Um, so yeah, Nissa, Nissa who shakes the world is good um, because it means that that our opponent can take out one of our planeswalkers. But not the Sarkin. Come on. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. So one play we can make is just take out Nissa here. Like Let me aid your research. I wonder what our opponent's gonna start naming with this Tamio. Like like just ignoring Tamiyo is definitely a, a little bit risky, but it can also pay off. Like, so yeah, currently on the ignore it plan, though Nissa, we may want to just go ahead and take out. So we can plus Sarkin and then attack Nissa for eight. So yeah, there's the mass manipulations going into the graveyard if we had if we had a shock in hand it would be lethal unfortunately don't have one i guess i could play to fairy and tick up see what we get could also minus it on nissa me later don't th I think I'd rather just plus yeah cuz plus gives us access to the spell pierce Let's skip to, the good uh, to untap untap our land so yeah we're gonna plus everything to the skies. kill the Nissa off so our opponent doesn't have a ton of mana And that was just game one to uh, to the good guys. 
All right. Are the good people? We won. We won the first game. <clears throat> so. Don't think we want the war bosses or the lava coils. The Dovin's vetoes are interesting to counter cards like mass manipulation. This is another matchup where I don't think Sahili is super impressive. Clarion is good, but it's it's a little bit slow on the draw. Prison Realm deals with the Nissas. I'm gonna board it I'm gonna board in a couple of realms and just take out the Clarions. Like, Narset is pretty good. It stops Krasis. It stops, like, some other stuff. Narset's just generally solid. And Little Teferi is going to be... Yeah, I mean, we saw those cards do pretty good work on, in the last game in the matchup. So I like this in general. Just opt into interaction, into into Planeswalker. And Luke is a, Luke is, is taking a trip to Paris, to Mulliganing. So that is good for us. Now we could, we can either put, I think I'm just gonna put this into play tapped. Have access to Lava Coil or Opt on this coming turn. Now that our opponent has played a creature, we will go ahead and deal with it. And the question is to Narset or to Teferi, right? I'm gonna play Teferi, it might get countered. Sometimes there are gonna be negates lurking. But I think we'd rather play out the Teferi and then have the Narset resolve in this spot. Also, I pro I could have played the Interplanar Beacon last turn. I maybe I probably should have, but we're gonna play it this turn. Wow, that's actually a lot of good stuff. We already have one Sarkin in hand. I think I'm just gonna take the shock for the cheap removal spell that it provides, because like we're, our mana may be tied up. Go ahead, make use of Narset. Kind of want to just take another Narset. Could also take Dovin's Veto, which is pretty safe. Yeah, I'll take the Veto. And just slam Sarkin. I think I'm just gonna make it make a dude and there it is the concession from Luke
So this is the type of hand where the beacon becomes an actual mana fixer, but it doesn't allow us to cast our spell pierce. I am going to keep it. That's pretty good. Steam vents. Could shock there to hold up one mana stuff, but not going to. Now I kind of wish I did because of that surge. Island, island search though. I isn't. It's not clear what what deck we're playing against. Maybe it is just Nexus, like Simic Nexus. So we can counter this and stop some of our opponent's mana development. Although I don't know if that's the axis we really want to fight on. I guess by tanking here, our opponent knows that we have probably knows we have something. But I don't think we're supposed to spell pierce this in general. Narset is a pretty interesting draw step. So we have the option of Teferi, Time Raveler, or Narset. I think I want to play Narset to make Chemister's Insights and stuff like that worse immediately. Gonna take the big Teferi. Because we already have a little Teferi in hand. Also, like we might want to we might want to play a little Teferi in minus. Ooh. Woodland Cemetery. Alright, well I I'm I officially now don't know what's going on. Our opponent has kind of gotten us pretty good with this Eldest Reborn. I think I'm just going to play out to Fairy Time Raveler. I could bounce. I could bounce the Eldest Reborn because Eldest Reborn gets back Narset, which is pretty good. Um, let's either bounce the Eldest Reborn or bounce Search. Like just because we have the Spell Pierce, I'm gonna try bouncing the Reborn. It's kind of a interesting choice. Nissa. So this is gonna be some sort of Planeswalker. Planeswalker base deck then. I'm just gonna spell pierce that now. Here goes nothing. So the question is Which Planeswalker it's best to play? I think I'm just gonna play Teferi and tuck that search. Like the Teferi may die. This isn't a fight you can win. I guess if our opponent has Nissa, it's quite it's quite bad for us. And they did put one in the graveyard. Okay. 
Yeah, mass ma mass manipulation is strong, but we do have we have both. So we have both mobilized district here, and we have Sarkin. And if our opponent just passes, we have little to ferry, so we know that we can take out this to ferry hero of Dominaria if we just play Sarkin and plus. Could also just could also shock it. And that might be better so that we can Sarkin minus. Like the shock is not doing that much in this hand. Th I think I'm gonna go for that line. This is a, also gives us a bit more protection against like a second mass manipulation. Well, our opponent has a lot of mana. Now, Tamio's probably going to get back the mass manipulation, right? Like they have n they have access to 9 mana, so it's pretty bad for us. I follow the tracks of the wise. And they can potentially have 10 mana next turn. So We actually have 18 damage this turn, I believe. If we were to activate both mobilized districts. I kind of want I kind of want to just do that. We could also play Narset as well. Yeah. I know keep an open mind. Oh wow, Spell Pierce chain Spell Pierce is very good. Um So I guess the question is, do we want to leave up the pierce? I think the answer is probably yes. Although, our, we also probably just have lethal. If our opponent takes things, we can just mobilize district on the next turn. But the safest play feels like leaving up spell pierce and just going face. So that's what I'm going to do. At the cost of leaving our opponent at three more life. I guess they can take Sarkin plus it and then make the Tamiyo into... Yeah, that doesn't do anything. Oh, did I did I forget to you know what? I apologize. I forgot to I forgot to use uh Little Teferi, I think, that turn. Cause it was on three. That was just a mistake on my part. Hopefully it doesn't matter. So they're gonna take Sarkin, so I mean, I'll just spell Pierce because I think we I think we're gonna have lethal next turn. So might as well. We have we have lethal in a couple different ways. So like right now. We can play our second Sarkin. We can also just bounce the dragon. There's not that much our opponent can have 
for with just that one mana available. Just taking a little look at. Okay, well they they do have an elf. Uh, that that's not going to get them out of this though. So, yeah, we're just going to bounce and play second Sarkun. So definitely an interesting deck that our opponents got going on there. I want the Dovin's Vetoes because it seems very non-creature oriented, although we did see an a Llanowar Elves at the end of the game. I take out some of the removal spells. Prison Realm could be okay. Legion Warboss could actually be good as well. I'm just gonna board in the war bosses, I think, as well. We're gonna take out Sahili. Sahili is a card that I'm taking out a lot. I'm just—it's one of the weaker walkers in the deck, in my opinion. And if we're boarding in more boss, we kind of want to have less three mana plays. And I think leaving the prison realms on the bench is fine. I'm going to try this. The reason why war boss could be good is we didn't see that much creature removal. And it's good against cards like the Eldest Reborn. Cards like Mass Manipulation, it's pretty decent against that. Just because you can make a bunch of creatures quite quickly. Sphinx of, of Foresight. It's going to do a little scrying for our opponent. Well, I wasn't expecting that. That's the classic Grazer turn one and just don't do anything. Well, I'm gonna shock myself in case of search for Escanza. But the, Arbor the Arboreal Grazer does not look good here. And it looks like our opponent is, in fact, mana screwed. Those who cannot perceive beyond this, meditate and prepare. I think it's Narset, by the way, over to Fairy. And I'm just going to take another Narset. Um. I just like digging for Sarkin. Like, we don't have a Sarkin yet, and once we get a Sarkin, it just allows us to close out the game super fast. Yeah, so there's Sarkin. Now we can play our... Teferi. But our opponent was just kind of dead. I kind of, I, I, well, I, I shouldn't say I like these hands, but I do generally keep these hands because opt, opt can be anything, right? It's, uh, I, like, if you think about it optimistically, 
then the ops can be quite good. Now, now that we've drawn Sahili for turn, I, I almost just want to wait on the ops so that we get more triggers off the Sahili. Now, taking this line does mean our opponent can adapt this Growth Chamber Guardian. But if we if we were to opt to try to dig for something, it's also pretty bad. They had the perfect card. So now we almost need to find... Well, we drew Shock, which can kill the Growth Chamber Guardian. So this is just kind of awkward timing. More or less. <laughs> well, I guess we're shocking this. Hope it, hoping that our opponent plays a non-creature spell is just... Yeah, not super likely. That was our best draw. So we're going to cast that. Hopefully it gets us back in this game. Alright, we can counter that. And I'm just going to use the Spell Pierce aggressively. And we drew Narset, so things are looking up all of a sudden. And just, the trick for this. just playing out our Planeswalkers. We don't want our opponent to have another Spellbreaker or Haste Creature. And they don't. But they do have a Shock. Which is pretty good. I guess, I guess we don't care. We don't care that much about this Llanowar Elves. Like, we, we may want to use two removal spells on something. Like, if our opponent plays, like, Skargan Hellkite, we might just want to fire both of these off. In this case, we want to just Lightning Strike the Phoenix. And then we can bounce the Egg. Pretty sweet draw step. Hmm. So, uh, still not really in. I don't think using the sock, the shock, is uh, necessary. I might do it on our opponent's end step. If they were to not play anything. They did play something. Although just having having an artifact is kind of valuable. Yeah, I'm going to kill this. No. Hmm. I guess so we can bounce the phoenix. Ha we have a servo. Yeah, just having that ad additional servo on the battlefield, we can actually just start beating down with Mobilized District. So 
So we're gonna, I'm gonna cash this in. I should probably activate the district first while we have three planeswalkers out. Obviously we want to draw spells. So that, that's a spell. So, I think we can minus, we could minus Sahili, right? To copy District. Not sure that's gonna really be enough though. Damage output. All right, that's per that's perfect. I mean, our opponent can kill can get rid of it potentially, but we have five mana. We have so many good draws here. Like Little Teferi, Sarkin is amazing. We get to trigger Sakili. Think, think it's Sarkin? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take Sarkin. So, that Deafening, Cla that Deafening Clarion draw was critical. Very lucky to hit that, and from there, things kind of came together. We are going to be on the back foot being on the draw. So we want all of our removal spells. Even the prison realms are good. Lyra can, can be nice. I'm going to take out spell pierces and mox, moxes and... Definitely some Sahili's. Like Sahili doesn't protect itself at all. Can be a bit of a liability. It was pretty good that game, but it wasn't wasn't actually the reason why we won the game. So we're, we're going to be heavily reliant on the, these early removal spells on the draw. We have a Clarion. No red mana yet, but I think we want to keep. Could just get beat down. Like if our opponent plays a Spellbreaker... Or even this this grow chamber guardian is is pretty annoying. One option is to prison realm that. Another option is to bounce it with little to fairy. I kind of want to just use up one of these little to fairies because we have the clarion. So it may not be bad for us if our opponent, like say our opponent kills Teferi and just plays two more Grow Chamber Guardians, that would not be bad for us. Now this Null Hide is bad for us. I kind of want to just play, yeah I'm going to play Sarka, I mean Karn, not Sarkin, Karn. And just make a chump blocker. Evil, but not Some solutions must be built. We can we can just jam Lyra. Next turn, Lyra can come down. So our opponent has access to all of the growth chamber guardians that they want at this point. Unwise. 
We're gonna tick up now. Wow, they gave us a Clarion. Huh. So we can potentially double Clarion next turn. But I also am pretty interested in just playing this Lyra out. Because it, there's not that many answers that our opponent can have for it. There are some. Like if they have Vivian, it would be terrible. Collision. Collision is bad. Now, if our opponent, we can still, we can still double Clarion, right? Because our interest, it's very interesting to me that our opponent gave us a Clarion in the spot. So yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, it's our, our only chance, right, to double Clarion? Why not do both modes? Okay, so our opponent's now all in on board. And they're just gonna go for this immediate immediate adapt, which is interesting. So we could we could play Sarkin out and make a 4-4 four -four with it. That's the line I'm I think I'm gonna take. Just opt end of turn. The 4-4 four four can trade with the Growth Chamber Guardian, and, and that these are the 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 last of the Growth Chamber Guardians. I think Narset's worth the top. Just some more card advantage. Wow, so we can we can double prison realm. I'm gonna I'm gonna cast start with one because we, we know we have to get we have to prison realm. Not I shouldn't say have to, but the Brontodon can just get rid of a prison realm itself. So that seems like a straightforward realm target. And then we can just get get the other one. Other options include bouncing. But then the the Teferi could die, but then Sarkin becomes on 3. So we can make another 4/4 four, four with it. Like if we go to Fairy bounce our opponent can then kill to fairy time reveler. Maybe that's fine. That way we can hold the prison realm in case of like a phoenix. You show remorse. I'll show. You. Don't worry. I got this. I summon you. All right, so our opponent's flooding out now a bit. Unfortunately, we have no dragon. So that attack works in our opponent's favor. That's actually perfect. Because we can, if we want to, we can just minus well, minus minus works. We're, we're, I'm gonna cash this in for a dragon, and then yeah, just just go minus minus. Behold. 
and the, and then the Narsets can kind of take over the game. We could just let this attack through. Like, just let our opponent kill Sarkin. Which I think would be fine, but I also, like, am not really wor worried if... Like, either way, it's good for us. Um... Sure, we're gonna keep our 4-4s. Four Just kill our opponent with those. And then probably just Prison Realm one of these Grow Chamber Guardians. Not that we have to do that. And here's another Sarkin, which is... Yeah, that's just game. So the key decision point that I think our opponent may regret was choosing to give us that Choosing to give us that Deafening Clarion off the Karn Plus. Now, they may have been thinking they also didn't want to give us more lands. But it ended up working out for us that we had that second Clarion. So there's only two mobilized districts in the deck. We've been drawing them a lot. I'm, I think we'll keep this even though the mana is kind of sketchy. Could uh, opt turn one, but just gonna do it turn two. There's not really that many two, two mana plays in this deck. So I'm interested to see what our opponent's playing. Well, we're, we may see how good Sakili's are this game. Could be Is It Phoenix with just kind of a slow draw. Once again, I'm gonna hold on to the opt, I think, because we're gonna play Sahili next turn. And just having that combination is pretty powerful. We can also just play Sahili plus opt or play Karn next turn. Now this could be a Crackling Drake, and it is. So, that's annoying. This is where having a bunch of Planeswalkers isn't necessarily going to help. Because the, the Drake is so big. I guess I will just run this Healy out. But... It's almost certainly going to die. So, yeah. We have no clean removal in hand to the, this Crackling Drake. And our opponent is on... Is it either Drake's or Phoenix? Alright, so our Sahili is going to take one for the team. I guess we keep that? I don't, I don't even know if I'm supposed to, but I will.
Sarkin's not bad. I guess I'll just make a 4 4 with Sarkin. Hope that hope that these two trade off, but that kind of seems unlikely. Yeah, that that's not working for us. Our opponent's just going for everything, huh? So next turn, we're fairly likely to be just dead. If we don't do something quickly. So I guess it's either Bounce or, or Tuck the drake. I'm gonna try to minus big to fairy on it because bouncing a crackling drake is not not very good. I mean neither neither of these plays are good but I'm gonna go with this one. That way potentially they don't have any more drakes to play this turn but I have a feeling this one is is lost at this point. We will meet again. And now they can draw back that, that crackling drake. Interesting that they're not casting it. I mean, yeah, interesting sequencing. We're gonna play some stuff out there. Whether it's actually gonna help is a different story. <laughs> I guess we have double mocks now. Perfect. just dead? That's weird that our opponent just sent a shock at our face. Oh, they're gonna finale. Yeah, that makes sense. Just going off with these finale of promises. Pretty impressive stuff. Pretty impressive stuff. Well, that, that game, we were never really in it. If I'm honest, we were never really in it. Hopefully, things will change after Cyborg. We definitely want Lava Coils. Lava Coil can answer the Crackling Drakes. So can Prison Realm. So I'm going to board those cards in. Don't 
know that we need Dovin's Veto, considering we are, we've already got Spell Pierces. I'm going to board out the Mox Ambers. Lyra's interesting. Depends if our opponent keeps in the Beacon Bolts. If they don't, it's very good. Clarion is not that exciting because we're pretty unlikely to get a two for one with it. Same with Lightning Strike. I guess our opponent might be boarding in, in Niv Mizzet, but we, we have some answers to Niv Mizzet. I'm going to run this, see how it goes. I like this. If our opponent plays like a, t a charter course here, I, I think we we just counter it. I'm just gonna time Raveler to bounce that Electromancer now. We have two of them. And we kinda wanna save the Prism Realm. And if this gets shocked, that's fine. So now there's a decision point. Because if we realm, if we prison realm the Electromancer, our opponent can just possibly play a Crackling Drake. But I guess then we could Sarkon. Like if we're not if we're not playing Prison Realm, we're not really doing much this turn. The district does allow us to potentially block the Electromancer. Hmm. I think this is is a tough call. I'm in a realm. Electromancer is super strong. Our opponent may be taxed on blue mana. Now this is another tough decision. Don't think Sahili's want... I, uh, yeah, that's close, whether we want Sahili or not. At this stage. Alright, so they have the Drake. Just gonna run out Sarkon and hope that our 4-4 four, four, I guess we don't we don't like have to make a 4-4. Four, four. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the 4-4. Four, four. Like <laughs> if they kill the Sarkon we have another one, so that's actually Well we have we have another one of both of our our walkers, so the Drake killing one isn't a huge deal. A dragon would rather die than lose. Okay. That's fine. We can also bounce the realm and replay that. Hmm. Well, we don't we don't need to act during our main phase. Trust me, 
I have a plan. I mean, having having Sarkin on play and two dragons means that our opponent. In kind of a bind. Come to me. Hmm. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna attack here. Attacking feels pretty greedy. There's one arc light, so our opponent is in fact playing those. And their hand is starting to come together a little bit. That's that's a good draw. Opt is okay. So we're definitely plussing here. I will call the dragons. And I think yeah. They're they're pretty dead. They are we're dead there. Alright, game three. I th After playing these games with the deck, the Sahili is definitely the card I've been boarding out the most, and also the one that seems like the most underwhelming, in my opinion, for whatever that's worth. Like, on the draw, it's... I mean, it can be good on turn three. But our opponent has a lot of stuff in the air. I'm still I'm still unsure about it. I guess I'll try I'll try him. I'll I'll, I'll try the two Sahili still. We would definitely board in more lava coils or prison realms if they if I could. But we only have so many of those cards. If they find the beacon bolt, then Lyra just is bad, but hope but if they don't, it's great. So pretty high risk, high reward card in this matchup. That is scary. Arclight Phoenix in the graveyard. Do we want a shock? Shock is okay. You can kill an Electromancer if our opponent plays one. It's not the most exciting of cards. You can kill a Phoenix, but... Like, shocking Arclight is not great. Okay, Narset. So if our opponent can, can get the Phoenix back, they can kill the Narset, but... I'm gonna try it. They could also spell pierce this. And okay. That's okay. Not the end of the world. Just gonna prison realm.
So we have our two our two good spells in hand coming up. Either Teferi or Lyra Dawnbringer. Depend depending on how what our opponent does. I'm just gonna play out the Lyra because it's less likely to get countered. Now they might have that beacon bolt that I was mentioning. But at least at least they can't spell pierce a Lyra, right? They can't negate a Lyra. They can beacon bolt a Lyra. So we shall see. Or use two, two burn spells is also an option, like a lightning strike plus a shock or something like that. Wow, two spell pierces to the graveyard. That's interesting. So does that make it less likely that our opponent has a spell pierce for this Teferi? It's kind of the question. I am now asking myself. I mean, it does, right? Like, maybe they're playing four spell pierces, but... We see three in the graveyard. So, I'm gonna jam. Right on schedule. Hurry. So now we've got both of our big threats doing some good work. Teferi and Lyra. And Sarkin. Sarkin can come out too. So it looks like our opponent's going to play two burn spells. Probably just two lightning strikes. Nope. Shock and strike. Plus another spell to bring back the Arclight Phoenix. I'm just gonna shock that. I know that the Phoenix can come back, but we just want our Teferi to be on a high amount of loyalty. Don't make another move. You know what? I'm not done yet. So Playing Sarkin seems pretty reasonable. Can opt first, I guess. <laughs> Sahili. I don't think Sahili is what we're looking what we're after. This moment. Now that is pretty nice. Just gonna put the two the two districts in play in case we wanna just start using you know, using the districts, getting in for damage. Like, we're almost at the point where we've just turned the corner to the point where we can just kill our opponent very, very quickly. Can activate one of these districts.
So I'm I'm going to now. Just in case we want that additional blocker. Only human. So there's the second Arc Light Phoenix for our opponent. Let's see if they can bring the, bring them both back. Wow, the third arc light. That's pretty pretty rough. So our opponent gets to take out our Teferi, huh? I guess we we get rid of one of the arc lights on the way out. That's not good news. Oh no, do they also have a shock? Oh. Wow. That was a brutal, brutal turn. Yeah, really not a good turn for us there. I guess we don't have... Yeah, we don't have enough mana to do everything we want to do anyways. So I guess I, this probably isn't the optimal way to tap my mana. Oh well. Not feeling good about this game anymore. Yeah, there's Beacon Bolt. Beacon Bolt can take out our dragon. The one thing about the Planeswalkers deck is it's not good at playing from, from super far behind like this, especially in the grindier matchups. I guess I can play this, but I don't even know. Yeah, there's there's the negate. That's GG. All right, so that was the deck. I hope you all enjoyed the content. Um, the the one thing I don't like about the list is the uh, Sahilis. So I'm gonna be. I'm going to be playing around with some numbers, the one lightning strike, like, kind of hit or miss, but overall, Jeskai Walker seems like the real deal. It's doing a lot of powerful stuff, and thank you all for watching.